Hello, whoa, hello everybody. Welcome back to Day Drinking. It's been a few weeks, or a couple weeks, I've been taking a tiny hiatus just to, you know, recoup, rejuvenate. Uh, also, my son turned four, that was pretty exciting. So we spent some time together away from this world we live in. Um, Whiskey Badger is back, hell yeah. So today we're doing brandy, very exciting uh, selection of, uh, first we're gonna assess a new producer, a really, really unusual and exciting producer, and then a couple of new bottlings, although it looks like an email has gone out on one today. They might already be sold out, but whatever, we opened them, so it'll be fun. The first thing we're gonna taste today though is, is really, uh, yes, it's Dodger celebration day drinking. I'm wearing the uh, I'm wearing the Dodger cap every every session until uh, until we win the World Series. Um, the first thing we're gonna taste really really interesting. This is um, this is a, this is a brandy a set of brandies distilled by a gentleman a legendary restaurateur author chef uh, Narce David. Um, he he he. He owns an estate, or I'm, I think he still owns an estate in Napa, um, and and distilled these brandies uh, many, many, many years ago. Uh, in fact, close to 30 years ago, I think, in the early 80s. And um, it was basically the fourth leaf, uh, you know, when you before you expect serious grape growth, um, and they had tended the vineyards, cut them back a little. And when they returned at the uh, end of the season, um, a, a large number of Cab and Merlot uh, had grown unexpectedly. Um, and so they took those grapes down to uh, our friend George Rumpf's distillery, um, St. George, and, and distilled them. And, uh, and this is the result. There they stayed until, um, uh, gosh, maybe... I think 10-ish years ago, and then they were moved to Germain Robin. Uh, the first one is unaged Eau de Vie uh, blend of Cab and Merlot. I'm sorry, not early 80s. 1991 is the distillation date, early 90s. This is an Eau de Vie um, straight into tank or maybe in used barrels. I don't have the exact details. Um, 80 proof, distilled 20, oh, 30 years ago now. God, I'm getting old. And... Mmm, very classic, great brandy nose. Lots of pear. Some red fruit. These are such unusual things to find. And and um, Narce is an old friend of the store. He knows our owners. We've, uh, you know, he, he, he owned a restaurant in the Bay that for a long time was considered to be the best wine list in the country, if not one of the best in the world, um, and uh, you know we hear stories from from our own, from Clyde, our, one of our owners, you know, about walking in there and getting just outrageous things for you know nothing, old Lafitte from perfect vintages, twenty five bucks a bottle, that sort of thing. And so uh, we were really really excited to taste these, and and now hopefully we'll be selling them soon. Hmm, this is very. Very expressive, very soft, as you'd expect from a well-rested uh, Eau de Vie. I'll put that back in the glass, uh, keep it around just for posterity's sake. Um, the next two are um, distilled each from a single varietal. Uh, these are the same estate, but f aged for 21 years in new limousine oak, uh, so French oak barrels. Oh, this is a very light color, this one. This is 100% Merlot. Um, that's, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty unusually light. I wonder what's, what the, the reason for that is. Hmm, this is, this is pretty easy going. Almost has a slight aged grappa, you know, kind of reminds me a little bit of the the Nonino Chardonnay. 
if you've ever had that special product. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Very, very delicious. Nose. Some savory components. Mmm. Super easy going. Kind of some orange type fruit, not citrus, more like quince. Um, oh, yes. And now the Cabernet. I was told these were aged in the same type of barrel, but I don't know. This seems pretty, pretty distinctly different. Um, let's have a go with this. Oh, wow. This is no joke. This is really, really the next level stuff here. Ah, oh, wow. Yes, that feels very much like well-aged brandy, 21 years, and then into bit, and then, then into tank. So it's been resting in tank after that. I'm not sure when or how it was reduced. We don't have much information about the elevage. It may have be that they moved it into tank because they uh, naturally found it to be close to 80 proof. Mm. If it turns out, wow, that is fabulous. Mm, very, you know, we wouldn't normally make um, high quality brandy from Cabernet because uh, the grape varietal has the exact opposite uh, characteristics of, of a great um, brandy making wine, um, namely uh, very low acidity compared to uni blanc or what have you, um, very high sugar levels. But in the fourth leaf, um, you know, likely these grapes were pretty high acid, young, immature vines, and, uh, and, and probably pretty low sugar as well. They would have been pressed off the, the skin so you don't have the tannin being in, included during fermentation. Mm, that is fabulous. We're really, really excited to have these on the shelf. Um, a legend in the uh, in the California culinary uh, history and and uh, uh, certainly um, a, a fabulous new phase. Uh, mm. That is just lovely stuff. Um, hopefully, you know. Uh, Narce and uh, and a, and a, a, another friend of the store, Daryl Cordy, bottled some um, extremely, uh, you know, Cordy Brothers is a, a gourmet uh, market in Sacramento, which I highly recommend everybody check out. They have super duper access to unusual products from all over the world. I buy my soy sauce from there, um, you know, canned fish. Uh, Awesome values on olive oil and, and vinegar. Um, but uh, they, they are famous for bottling um, a line of uh, uh, single malt scotches back in the early 80s. Uh, this is before the estate, I guess. And they, uh, the, the, those have become some of the most legendary bottlings ever. Um, the, the, the Duthies for Cordy, extremely rare and expensive. I love canned fish too. Um, my dear, that's my wife. Uh, and so, uh, apparently, uh, it was Narsay who actually picked out those barrels on a trip to Scotland with his wife, um, which is a really interesting story that I, I hopefully will maybe get him on here one, one day to talk about. Um, but those, those whiskeys and just the provenances of, of those, of those special bottles are second to none. Um, so really exciting stuff. Moving on, uh, a new brandy producer. The first time we've ever uh, featured this. This is the Gilles Sorot, Sorot um, from a wonderful little village in Armagnac. Uh, that's uh, uh, Lannemagnan. Lannemagnan is the place where uh, the Claverie family makes Domaine de Barillon, which are a famous uh, producer, and 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 the terroir is is some of the best in Gascogne, and um, and this air this this particular producer is someone we passed by several times. In fact, we've we I remember spending an an hour plus 
searching Lana Magnan for this producer with Charles. We couldn't find it the first time we went. The second time we went, we showed up and there was nobody there. Uh, I remember Charles had said that he had been once before and that he had <laughs> he had been attacked by their dog and bitten <laughs> on his way back into the car. But the man is fearless. So we went back and the dog was indeed there. Um, Gilles was in the f in the fields and he's very much a viticulturalist, very interested in the um, in the uh, uh, in the vines, um, and um, and his mother greeted us and welcomed us and, and came in and we chatted a little bit, uh, and then Gilles came in and he's very um, you know very uh, humble, um, you know, but very proud of course of his his Armagnac. It's it's generally all new oak. You see gorgeous color and. The, all the brandy spent at least three years in, in these barrels before being transferred into used oak. So they're sucking in that tannin. Um, and that, that's pretty typical élevage for most producers. And then uh, being allowed to uh, mature um, without the additional tannins for another 20 plus years here. The style is, I think, very traditional and, and filled with finesse and complexity it's um that's it that this one is 23 years old we have also a 21 year old um they're not like really well known they've been in a couple of times uh from a couple of other little producers but no starts with a big sort of leathery tone some spice. It's not very fruity style. Uh, I remember it being a little fruitier. Maybe some air will help that out, um, which is good. I like a good savory. Um, this does remind me a little bit of Barillon in that respect. His cellars are, his shea, as I should say, because they're not underground. His shea is basically his, um, his barn. Um, and so barrels are kind of um, haphazardly stacked around the barn. Uh, the farm equipment is in there. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's open ground, it's quite humid. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, he's definitely in the, in the farm category of, of Armagnac production. Mm, now, the, now it's opening up. Now we're getting some red fruit. Some kind of wild honey. Mm. Yes, this stuff is very, very good. We should have bought more. I don't think there's much left, really. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, very balanced on the palate. Tannin is totally integrated. No astringency. Some good structure. It's not heavy. I'd call it medium bodied. Um, Great spice on the finish. I'm going to have to go again. Gilles Surratt. We'll have to order more of this stuff. He should be a, a known entity. Lots of lots of complexity there. Beautiful little 23-year-old Armagnac from an underappreciated producer. Very excited to have that. And finally, it's, it's going to be a short show, it feels like. I'm kind of powering through all this stuff. The big boy. This is Rare Armagnac Company. Um, they call this the Mars, although I don't actually see, where do they put this on here? They, do they actually put the word Mars on the bottle? It doesn't even say it anywhere. Well, it was sold to me as Mars. I, I just don't see it. This is a small lot, a single lot uh, that they purchased um, this is a small bottler, uh, not distilled by them, from a domain that we worked with directly through Charles called Domaine de Puchegu, um, Pierre Laporte. Uh, he was one of the first um, in the Tenerez that really stood out from, from the rest. Uh, we visited him back in 2013, I believe, um, and he was... Uh, he was unique because he really, one, he, a little bit like Gilles, he, he, he was very much about the vines. He was a viticulturalist. He, that was his focus. 
But his sort of philosophy was that if he was going to spend all that time in the vines, he might as well, um, you know, spend the extra money to make sure that he was making the best Armagnac possible. Um, that meant every year new oak um, barrels were uh, of the highest quality. You can see the outrageous color as compared to the, the Gilles Surat. These would have stayed in the pièce in the in the barrel the entire time. This is thirty nine year old Armagnac, and Gilles was pretty unique fellow. the the uh, The property was exquisitely well manicured, um, every fence painted. No, you know we're used to going to Gascon. You see, it's a it's a working farm typically, so you see debris everywhere and normal stuff, compost piles, and and this was not the case for the. For Puchegu, it was it was so dialed in. Um, every wall, you know, crisp white, um, and uh, some beautiful trees. And it was a small property, but um, a very high quality terroir for for Teneres, which typically has more um, more soils that are uh, a little more appropriate for winemaking. But his 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 property had more sand and more sable fauve, which is the red clay that makes for a very high quality. Armagnac that, that, than most producers in Tenerez. And um, at the time he had told us that this was 100% Baco, um, although the bottler right now seems to believe it was Uni Blanc. There's some discrepancy there. So we don't really know what's in the bottle, to be perfectly frank. Um, but uh, what we do know is that it spent 39 years in um, new, new, new Limousin Oak. It was never reduced whatsoever. Um, typically in Armagnac, what happens is uh, the producers once or twice a year, maybe they, um, they aerate uh, their products. Um, how do you spell Baco? B-A-C-O. Thank you. Thank you, Drinks with David. Oh, that's, that's a great name. Um, and so the, so the, the, the normal routine is you you bring out all the brandy you blend a whole vintage together uh you maybe aerate which is like they have a contraption it's kind of like a big tub uh everything gets blended the vintage get blended together and then pushed through like a sprinkler um and uh, some producers may just put it in the tub and mix it around here and there and then back into the barrels top up so that you have less room in the barrel and therefore less evaporation the subsequent year um, because there is a limit to the amount of evaporation that is allowed. So beyond that limit, you have to pay taxes on brandy that you are not selling. Um, but many good producers um, don't do that. They, 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 don't, uh, they don't aerate as frequently. They, uh, in that process too, you might add a little bit of water as well and then back into the barrel. You know, may, you know maybe just keep a little consistent uh, uh, degree for your products. Um, but in this case, uh, Pierre didn't believe in that. Um, so it's bottled at 53.7. Um, pretty, pretty powerful stuff. And, um, and unfortunately, uh, um, a, a year after we first visited Pierre, um, he passed away, uh, sadly, tragically. And, um, and his children were not interested in in, in um, continuing the business, um, and so his his Armagnacs were sold. We spent years you know, just bugging Charles, basically, because there's very little. I mean, Charles Neal is our importer for many of the Armagnacs we work with. There's very little we can do other than that. Um, he has connections all throughout um, uh, Gascon. I mean, if you if you go to basically any producer, because he's been to all of them and he's imported almost all of them, and you ask them if they have representation in the United States, 95% of them will say, oh yes, yes, Charles Neal is our importer. And that is true, but of course, only in tiny, tiny batches. And there are hundreds of producers that really aren't available in this in this market. Um, and and Puchegu, unfortunately, was one of them. Um, we feel very lucky that we were able to grab some um, so anyway, Pierre Laporte, uh, very, very much, uh, devoted to making the highest quality brandy possible. He also apparently collected, um, which, uh, I found recently, um, 
antique farm. Um, uh, he had a museum of, of antique farm tools and machines and all this stuff. Pretty interesting stuff. Oh, and this is a whole different level, whole different world. This is very much in that um, powerful, aromatic. If you had the La Fresh that we recently bottled with Lencantada, it has some of that similar fruity, sort of tart, desiccated fruit. Kind of gives me a like a black currant, blackberry, dark, very dark, dark fruit, leather, huge sort of exotic wood note. Wow, yum. Wow. Powerfully spicy. It's incredible how seamless these products are, even with the amount of oak. It is something that I think so many producers are so worried about over oaking their product because really they can't wait 40 years for it to be ready. Um, and they need, they, they certainly, um, they have to play to the palate that, that, that they're selling to, which is mostly French people. And, and the French are very, very um, uh, particular about that tannic element. This is extremely balanced and, and has fully developed the tannin. The astringency, the heat is there, but it's not an ethanol heat. It's, it's this big, bold spice. Um, and this is really the type of brandy that, that converts you know, whiskey drinkers. It's not whiskey. There's nothing, there's nothing that it'll really compare to somewhere in between you know, a great old bourbon and um, you know, almost, not really scotch, but you know, it's, it's really its own category, which, uh, this is the, um, oh, sorry. This is the rare Armagnac company. I think we're sending an email about it today. It's only a couple hundred bottles. We bought 300 and, um, sold 150 quite quickly. 1981. It's 39 year old brandy for 150 bucks. It's ridiculous. That's the Mars. Yeah, you got it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just fabulous stuff. Um, we should have bought more, clearly, because uh, it's almost sold out. But I think it beats the eight, the 1980 that we had. Nice. Get that Mars before it's gone. Mm. And the other thing about these, you know, they spent so much time in in wood that these bottles tend to get better and better and better and better as you let them sit. Um, this is quite quite open to start, so I can only imagine it, it'll improve. Um, very, very exciting stuff. Uh, fortunately, not more was made, and of course, um, rest in peace, uh, Monsieur Laporte, but uh, Hopefully there's more of this brandy to be had. Um, yeah, yeah, grab it now. Um, we'll hold on to it. Sorry, someone's asking about uh, coming to town next month. Yeah, yeah, grab it now, don't wait. Um, and if, if, if you don't happen to come into town, then we'll hold on to it or, you know, make it right, whatever you need, because uh, this won't last much longer. Um, certainly don't, don't expect to be here in November. Um, otherwise, uh, some interesting brandy. Oh yes. I forgot our final brandy of the day. This is a whole different world. This we found, uh, at Michel Giard, uh, the, the producer of Manoir de Montreuil which is probably our most popular everyday um, Calvados. He's, he's a proper Paydoge producer. Um, Andrew, my partner, and I um, met him at um, last spring. Um, ooh, I guess that's two springs ago now. At a little festival that was being held in Gascogne in the town. I'm blanking on the town name. Anyway, it was um, like a, a gourmet festival. So you had all the producers, 
uh, a number of producers lined up, and uh, Michelle uh, and his uh, daughter uh, were there um, pouring these uh, their fabulous, very traditional uh, pay doge um, arm yes, and, and, and Charles already brings those in, so there's not a lot of opportunity to do special stuff there. We could pick a vintage or what have you, but um, it's, it's a little bit more difficult. But we ended up you know, making an appointment to, to visit the beautiful and totally um, rustic old estate uh, in, um, in Montreuil, of course, uh, the Manoir de Montreuil. And there we found this cask of uh, American whiskey that had been filled with... Uh, with um, Calvados many years earlier. Um, so you can see Manoir de Montreuil does not use new oak. This is a very, very dark Calvados, very unusual, bottled at 42%, so not quite, I, I, I think probably reduced before um, aging in the barrel. Um, and it was just so unusual and unique. Uh, and, and Michelle was very, quite proud of it and, and thought it was a fun experiment and enjoyed it. There's only one barrel. Um, so we said, okay, give us a bit. And this is it. This is 20 year old Calvados. Um, the, they call it the special edition whiskey cask finish. Um, it's ridiculous. Um, incredibly, uh, still retains some strong appleiness very much in that sort of baked apple pie, lots of cinnamon spice. Certainly not your typical um, Calvados by any means, which, you know, Calvados obviously made from apples, sometimes pears, and in the most traditional sense, tends to have very low oak. Um, they like to reuse their barrels a lot. They don't, they, they don't really, the, the apple spirit is, is very delicate and they don't really, want most producers don't really want to ruin that with too much oak this is not new oak of course so it would have been used for for whiskey for many years before being transferred probably i think he the, i think it it then held scotch before that so it would have been used twice before being filled with um calvados but still the color is wonderful um and and the nose is Gorgeous. I mean, just a whole different level. It's not really bourbony at all, but it's like they've concentrated the apple flavor here. Not to um, oversell it, but it does remind me a little bit. Maybe it's just that extreme oxidation. It does remind me a little bit of Camus on the nose. Mmm. And there's the wood, definitely more wood than the, the typical manoir. Stays, I mean, it's definitely got some more astringency than the, than the typical Calvados, but it, it definitely stays on the apple side, um, almost like a, like a, like a well, mo moving into the sort of a spiced, like clovey spiced apple thing. Mmm. Yeah, this is unique. Very good uh, sort of Christmassy, perfect after Thanksgiving dinner, you know, in your pod or whatever. Mm. Well, that's absolutely delicious, unique. Um, we only took a little bit of this, I think 60 or 80 bottles, because um, it's so unusual. I have to say, you know, my typical uh, take on Oki Calvados is what's the point, but, uh, because it's, you know, it's such a unique spirit. And as soon as you start to add wood, you lose the character, but something about this really keeps it in the Calvados range. And, um, it's really, uh, a fun one, unique little pay doge whiskey finish. That's the domain de Mont. Montreuil, Man, Domaine du, du Man, Manoir de Montreuil, uh, 20 year whiskey cask finish. 
absolutely lovely stuff. Uh, very, very unique. Um, and that's all I got for today, guys. Nice, quick little session. Uh, hopefully, everybody's doing well. We're very excited for the holidays. You know, it's going to be a different holiday, but I think we're going to all find a way to make it work. Um, and uh, yeah, missed you guys. I'm going to be back on Thursday. We're going to be tasting the new but sold out Four Roses and might have a little treat for some of you. And then uh, I'm going to taste a new single malt brand. I have it listed as bourbon, but new, we're going to evaluate a new single malt brand that um, is coming hopefully next spring. I think it'll be really exciting. Um, the, the, the Bimber Distillery, um, it's become quite... Uh, quite well regarded. Um, often people are saying this is the best young single malt on the market today. Um, uh, that's saying a lot. There's a lot of great whiskey out there. There's a lot of terrible whiskey out there. A lot of good and bad craft, but uh, apparently Bimber is one of the very best. I haven't yet to taste it. We're, we're, uh, we're going to have the full lineup and hopefully it'll be on the next container in spring. Oh, Arden Merchant, Whiskey Badger's asking about another distillery. Um, it's unlikely those will be here. Uh, Arden Merchant is um, is a little distillery on the very western coast, um, owned by Adelphi, um, uh, the the bottler Adelphi. Very high quality. Very. Uh, very unique in that you know they, they're a big barley growing family so they have access a little bit like daft mill they have access to their own barley and, the, and and they're making enough to have it malted themselves um i i reached out to mr bruce not too long ago asking about it and it was sort of uh well we'll wait and see the pro the, the the product is in its infancy still and they're really in no rush to to get it over here um their partner on this side of the pond is quite, uh, yes, Adelphi, uh, is quite um, quite large. So they, they, they probably want, um, uh, they probably want it to be, uh, you know, a larger release when, when it does come. Hey, yeah, Hodlings and Co. repping that Daft Mill. We got the new 2007. Oh, I might open that on Thursday as well. Um, I think I'm supposed to be tasting that, but I, I guess I forgot my bottle at the store. I'll have to pop, pop over and grab it. Um, yeah, new release of Daft Mill has just hit. The other thing we have right now, guys, I don't know if you've noticed, is um, a huge number of pre-arrival single malt scotches, single malt and, sing and blended malt. Um, we, we teaspooned uh, half of the whiskeys, more than half the whiskeys that we um, are bringing in this year um, because blended malt, it's, you know, just as good as single malt. It is in all, you know, it's a it's a slightly complicated story, but in in essence, these are um, homeopathically blended. Um, so what we did was we took our a single barrel um, that we had selected, and put one drop of a very similar spirit, um, hopefully very close, and thereby turning into a blended malt. Um, we were very clear about the the contents of each, and. Uh, um, and so that is, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. We we will have some single malt as well, all the old particulars, and we were able to negotiate some pretty incredible values there. They're they're of course more expensive than last year. Actually, no, last year's old particulars did did see the tariff, so they'll, they'll be in line with last year's pricing, but a bit a bit above uh, what you'd find on um, the uh, the Hepburns, which are coming. Uh, and that should uh, that should do it. That that's going to be our whole whole the the whole portfolio coming in uh, mid November. Um, and when they do show up, I'll be here probably with Andrew, my partner, tasting through them with you guys, um, so we can really talk about what uh, what's available and the the various things. So many pre. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that, man. That they'll be available in real time as well. I'm not going to sell everything pre-arrival, um, just to get a gauge of what people are interested in, and um, most should be pretty close to the same price, give or take five, ten bucks maybe. Um, 
we are also getting back in, if you want to save some money, the good old Fault Line Blended Whiskey. Uh, that is a very exciting, inexpensive, high malt, medium peat blend that we do with Douglas Lang in the old label. Uh, so that'll save you some dollars. That's pretty crushable stuff, 100 proof. Um, very, very delicious. That uh, that should be in as well in November. And um, yeah, and then, you know, we'll see what else happens. Always something fun coming down the road. But uh, nice short session. Any other questions before I go, guys? Uh, did uh, Whiskey Badger say he has a barrel of something? What was that? I missed that. Oh. Oh. Whiskey Badger bought a bought a barrel that's cool uh that is very cool Arden merchant i hope hopefully that'll happen sooner than later um there are a couple of uh, very exciting single barrel programs that are open to the public in scotland these days so highly recommend Arden ho Arden merchant uh occasionally our friends up at doorknock castle um they do they do some crowdfunding via barrel sales that are really really exciting highly recommend that and um, there's more out there. So yeah, keep an eye out for it. We'll be back Thursday with some single malt and other goodies. And I do appreciate you coming by and look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, thanks guys, bye.